All right. So, uh, so I've gone over several versions of the IKFK switch, uh, starting from a very, very simple one where you pretty much just put a switch directly on the IK handle, and so you get a popping. Then I've also gone over a couple of versions of the IKFK blend switch, where you use multiply divide nodes or expressions or driven keys to well, make the joints basically blend from one to one to the one to the other. So basically, you have your IK chain and your FK chain, and they basically take turns controlling the bind chain in the center. Uh, usually, I've gone through a lot more trouble uh, using constraints and multiply divide nodes and the connection there. But now I've sort of developed a system that is actually much simpler and doesn't even require constraints. All you require are blend nodes, the joints, and the uh, the switch on the curve with a value of uh, basically just going from 0 to 1. So let's get started. So as I just said, I have my IK chain, bind chain, and I have the FK chain. So now I just need to create a blend node. So don't forget, to create the blend node, you go to uh, your hypershade, which is available under Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Once I can bring this up. And now there's a couple of places you can actually pull the blend. Uh, you want to create a blend node, blend colors basically. That's usually found under Utilities in your Hypershade. So that's going to be under uh, Utilities, and usually it's right there. You can also go to Create, and then uh, basically Color Utilities. You can choose Blend Colors, and it'll create a node. And if you double click on that, it brings it up in the Attribute Editor. Now essentially this is for basically blending colors, but we can also use it to blend values between objects. In this case we're going to blend attributes. Uh, specifically, we can blend the attributes between this joint and this joint. Now, if we do use the blend node, we're going to have to use multiple ones to actually have the blend happen. Um, <laughs> but, in general, it does work rather well. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load my blend node and I'm actually going to make three. I'm going to make or actually I'll just make two. One for the shoulder and then one for the elbow. Alright, so here's what we're going to do first. I'm going to select it. I'm going to name this one and I'll just call it blend shoulder. And then I'm going to duplicate this, and we'll call the new one Blend Elbow. Now remember you want to name everything you create, so that when you're making connections, or in case something breaks, you need to fix it later, it's easy to do so. So I'm going to shift select both of these nodes, so that I've highlighted. I can also come out here and select my joints, but I'm just going to uh, load the Blend nodes first. I'm going to bring up our connection editor. And so I'm going to Window, General Editors, and Connection Editor. If I reload one side, I'm going to reload the right side, just have the blend nodes there. It loads whatever you have selected into the Connection Editor. And so now I'm going to select my joints and start making connections. So I basically want the elbow of the IK and the shoulder of the FK of the uh, IK so both the IK joints I'm going to reload those into my left side because that's the from side you can click this button right here and change the direction so that the blend node becomes the from but right now we need the joints to send their information to the blend node so I want to connect my rotations from this into the blend nodes so in this case, my shoulder is actually this one here, the IK joint, because uh, I just basically named them in sequence, so they're sort of numbered. So the first joint is just IK joint, second joint, 
which is the elbow, is actually IK joint 1. Uh, let me actually just rename that, make it a little easier here. So I'm going to name that IK joint shoulder. And we'll call this one IK joint elbow. And I may as well do the same thing with my, uh, I'll at least name the elbows so that we know when we're switching to the elbows. Okay. So let me just reload these two. Okay, so, so my already updated the selections. So, <clears throat> got the elbow. For the elbow, I actually only needed to control one axis, but I'll just connect it into um, the specific one I want. So in this case, I know that I want my rotate Y. That's the one I want to be controlling. Okay, so I'm going to take my IK joint, rotate Y, and I'm going to connect this one into the elbow, and I'm going to connect it into the uh, color 1G, which is basically in the Y position on that node, and this is just for uh, consistency, visual consistency when I'm making connections. And then I'm going to take the shoulder, and I need actually all three of these attributes to feed in to the color 1 of my blend shoulder. So I could do them one at a time. Uh, sometimes I can. you can also just select the name. If there's the same number of attributes beneath uh, a category, you can just directly connect the categories. But sometimes uh, malfunctions can occur when you do that. Um, but usually it works fine. If you happen to come in here and try to connect one attribute specifically into another though, it's uh, pretty much Maya is only going to make connections based on most likely the first one, not the second selection. So right now we have the rotates from our shoulder feeding into the blend shoulder color one. And it's feeding into the RGB, which is basically the XYZ. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing, but we're going to do we're going to connect the FK elbow and the FK shoulder into that same node, but on color two. So I'm going to reload the left side while I have the FK joint selected. So reload that. Expand, expand so I can see the rotate values. And so, elbow, once again, I'm going to take my rotate Y. And this time, I'm feeding, instead of feeding it into color 1, I'm going to feed it into color 2 on the same attribute. Because I'm only feeding into, remember, the rotate Y, in this case, for my elbow. Uh, if you want to, you could connect all three of the attributes, um, but that's pretty much just a matter of choice. For this one, I'm just being very specific. Uh, okay, and so now I'm going to come down to my shoulder FK, and I'm going to connect that directly in the same thing. Then connect it into color two instead of into color one. So now we have both values feeding it. And so right now, if I came over and I selected my joints, we're not going to have anything happen, and that's because I haven't connected the blend node to feed out to our bind joints yet. So right now, both structures are at about 15 degrees, at least the shoulder joints are rotated about 15 degrees away from center. These, the IK and the FK joints are just duplicates of the bind chain, and I've just rotated the shoulder by about 15 degrees in, in each direction, just so that we can see the three separate joints, so that when they make the connections, you can see it easily. So now I need to actually get the blend nodes to feed out to the bind joints. So I'm going to select my bind elbow, and then my bind shoulder. I'm going to reload those into my left side, just where I've been loading all the, everything else. And I'm going to change the direction of the feed. I'm going to have it feeding from the blend nodes out to, on which are on the right side, out to the joints, which are now on the left side. So I'm going to click from to, so it switches to say to from. Okay, so now everything on this right side is feeding over into the left side. And so remember, when you're making connections, all you have to do is select the name of the thing you want to connect, and then think, uh, the, the source that you want to connect, and then the thing you're connecting it to, you just have to click on it. There's no shift, no shift selecting or anything like that, you're just clicking. Okay, 
So in this case, I need to see the outputs with my blend nodes. By default, they usually don't show. So if we go up to this menu under the connection editor where it says right display, you can tell it to show outputs only. However, usually outputs don't show unless you also choose show non-keyable because the outputs usually are considered non-keyable because they're not top level joints that are sort of published and that you know that aren't published in the channels box or in the attribute editor. So now I have my outputs for my elbow and my shoulder. And now I need to feed these into my bind joints. So first the elbow. Elbow, and all I need to do is choose the output G because that's the only one I have connections on. And I'm going to feed that into the ro rotate Y of my elbow. And so all I have to do is click on it. And same thing for my shoulder. But shoulder, I'm going to do all of the outputs and feed that entirely into the bind joint. Okay. So as you saw, it did not move. Why did it not move? It didn't move because right now, those joints are actually sharing control of those joints in the center equally. If I take the FK chain and select it, notice how notice how the joint chain, the bind joint chain, changes this magenta color. That indicates that there is some influence coming from this joint selection. You can even see it in the channels box. If you take a look, and you see, you look under outputs, it says blend shoulder. That's because it's actually feeding out to the blend shoulder. So now if I actually take this joint and I rotate it, let's say another 15 degrees, notice how the bind, the bind joint now is staying, it's floating in between our two existing joint chains. And that's because with the default settings of the blend node, they basically share control 50-50. So let's say we select those blend nodes. So if we select the blend node and we'll take a look at it in our attribute editor or in the channels box, and see in the attribute editor, you see it says blender is 0.5, which means it's basically going to divide each value being fed into it by half. Uh, so let's say we want it one to control it more than the other. So if I actually drag it to zero, then it rotates towards the FK. If I drag it to 1, then it rotates towards the IK. Now, the only reason these are one side's IK versus FK is just depending on the order in which they were connected. I connected the IKs first, so these apparently correspond to color 1. And I connected the FK second, so this corresponds apparently to color 2. Okay? So, when our blender is at 1, it's an IK mode. Our blender's at zero. It's an FK mode. So we can actually use that to connect our switch in. And notice how it's still doing that blend effect that you get when you use the multiply divide node with the constraints. But in this case, it's a much lighter structure because you don't need the extra constraints. You don't need to control their weight values. All we need to do is control this one value to do the switch. So, making the connection to this switch is actually quite simple. I'll put it back at 0.5 so you can see it when the connection happens. So, we need to do it for both the blend, we need to do it for the blend node for the shoulder and the elbow. So I'm going to select both of these again. And one, uh, here's a nice way you can actually bring up your connection editor really quick. You could just middle mouse on the nodes and you see where it does that little plus in the arrow. If you drop it while it's doing that and choose other, it brings up the connection editor and then you can just reload your nodes. Now I know that I need to uh, feed a value into my blender nodes, so I'm just gonna load them on the left side because this is currently the on the two side. So I need to feed something into the blender value of each one of the nodes. So I'm gonna select my switch, which I already have pre-made. Now your switch can actually be anywhere. I just happened to create this curve and I added an attribute to it. And don't forget to add an attribute. All you have to do is select the object you want to add the attribute to. You could select multiple multiple objects to select, uh, add the same attribute to multiple objects at one time. Or in this case, I'm just adding it to one. Uh, if you want to add, you can press Control on the keyboard and right click in the channels box and choose Add Attribute from there. Or you can go to the Modify menu and choose Add Attribute from there. And you'll see right in the header that says add attribute, and it has the name of the IKFK switch that I have selected, or the object I've selected. 
So if I wanted to add something and add an attribute, I'll have to just type in the name and then hit add and it adds the attribute like I have it here already. Okay? So I need to take this attribute, now I need to load it into the driving side or basically the uh, output source on the right side. So I'm going to reload and add that in there. Make sure with this one that you're not showing non keyable because usually just objects you just need to see the published so show published or you can do a show readable attributes because that's just the attribute I want to load is the IKFK and I need that to feed into the blender on both the elbow and the shoulder so since the elbow is not bent when I click on blender you don't see any change you just see the connection is made because I currently have it selected so you see that term magenta and if I do the same thing for the blender on the shoulder, you'll see it actually move to one direction or the other. Right now, the IKFK is set for zero, so it should go to the FK direction, which is down here, in this case. And so now the switch is set up. So, if I actually scrub this value, and I'm scrubbing just by selecting the name of the attribute in the channels box, and then middle mouse clicking and dragging, you see that now it's actually blending between the IK and the FK structure. And it should also work for the elbow. So if I rotate the elbow on, let's say, the IK structure, no, I'll rotate that a bit. And I'll rotate my uh, IK out a little more, just so it makes it a little more obvious that it's actually fully controlling it. I'll go back to my switch, and I'll scrub it. Now it's only one, so it's scrubbing through there really fast. But as you can see, it is controlling it perfectly. And so that's the IKFK switch using blend nodes and the connection editor.